so we got the first game tonight, and this is the science-based warm-up preparation I'm going to do for it. Okay, because I talk a lot about I talk about a lot of principles. Now you got to see them in action. You got to see how they apply. Okay, and one of the principles I talk about is stretching. Ace, get out. Go. The average Joe, it doesn't need to be stretching. Um, for improved flexibility, enhanced flexibility, or any sort of other physiological thing that they need. If you're engaging in a particular activity that requires extreme end ranges of range of motion, it's probably a good idea to stretch. Okay, And, you know, engaging in, in football again, I'm going to be using those end ranges of the range of motion, so now I need to retrain my nervous system to permit more range of motion, especially in the hip flexors, hamstrings, calves. So I'm going to start off with um, retraining the Golgi tendon organs to permit less involuntary muscle contraction, thereby more range of motion in the hip flexors. It's quite simple. You just load it, load the muscle. You're going to be stimulating everything you need to stimulate in order to improve the range of motion. This is entirely a nervous system response. You're not stretching anything. You don't stretch your tendon. You don't stretch your muscle. Basically, the Golgi tendon organ senses mechanical tension, it sends a signal to the spinal cord in order to produce an involuntary muscle contraction to protect the joint and resist more range of motion. Now, the longer I hold this, the effect the Golgi tendon organ has in terms of setting that signal is dampened which is what allows me to get more range of motion. That's it. Again, for the average show, do you need this? Not really. But if you're going to engage in you know, something like martial arts, it requires a lot of range of motion. Something like American football. Pretty much any sport, I would guess. You're probably going to need to train these joints to permit more range of motion. So that's what I'm doing. Oh, this is the second time I'm doing this today. I did it earlier. You know, it's, it would probably take a couple of weeks to really to optimize it but um you know the first game is tonight at 6 30 it's about <clears throat> 1 30 so you know don't overthink it just load it i just sit there let that signal get dampened and you'll notice you're going to have a lot more range of motion the dog is very bored so we'll start with the um, hip flexors. Another important one is going to be your hamstrings, obviously. There's a story, I forget who it was, but... Um, one soccer team gifted um, another soccer team from a different country, who was a very poor country, gifted them uh, cleats before one of their games. Because they weren't wearing cleats when they played, when they practiced. Then they started wearing cleats, you know, as they were gifted these cleats, and their performance was thrown way off. They played very poorly because they were used to playing without cleats. And that subtle change in the skill, they developed skill without cleats, and they tried to use that skill with that subtle change of cleats, they perform poorly. This is how specific skill transfer is. I do all the time. Just lean into it, create tension. Just let everything adapt. If you want to stretch, there's nothing wrong with stretching. It's just uh, it's just not necessary for most people. If you're an athlete, again, useful. If you're an average gym goer, you don't need to be spending all this time stretching. Unless you want to, unless it feels good. Does stretching enhance recovery? Absolutely not. It's the dumbest thing in the world. If anything, it will reduce recovery. Because it's creating more mechanical tension, more inflammation, more damage. 
really not sure where the belief that stretching improved recovery came from. I think it's just something people say. <laughs> like, there, it, it, I don't see any physiological reason why it would. I have not seen any evidence anywhere that suggests it does. Complete folklore. So that's going to be the preparation. Retrain my nervous system to allow more range of motion in my joints. And um, jog around a little bit, get warmed up. Then we'll see how it goes. Um, probably have somebody film a little bit, just so you can see kind of what's going on, how it applies to the actual sport. So you can witness that <laughs> you don't necessarily need to train explosively to be explosive. I think when it comes to explosiveness, you either are or you aren't. It's a combination of neurological efficiency, strength, body proportions, skill. Okay. I have all those things. Neurological efficiency, the correct body proportions for this particular activity, skill, strength. And the only way you could, the only, well, the factors that you can change to become more explosive is your skill and your strength. You can't change your body proportions. You can change body weight, body composition, stuff like that. You can't change your neurological efficiency. It's genetic. So if you want to become more explosive, you got to get stronger and practice a skill. Do you need to be jumping off of boxes and exploding and doing all this bullshit to get stronger? No. You can do high intensity training. You can do my program. Get as strong as humanly possible. Practice the skill. You're going to improve explosiveness. I'm going to prove just how explosive you can be using a proper high intensity training um, system by doing this flag football tournament. So be on the lookout. See you soon.